Hello everybody, hope you're having an awesome day today. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a big library. This is one that's been highly anticipated. You know, people have been really, really excited about it. And as you can already see, we're going to be talking about Cinematic Studio Brass. So what is this library? Well, essentially it's an orchestral library that uh, it's perfect as a workhorse um, starting point for a brass library. And uh, it basically ships with all of the essential brass instruments that you get in an orchestra. So you have the French horn, uh, you have trombone, trumpet, tuba. So those are kind of the four big ones. Then you have the bass trombone included as well. Now, in addition to that, you also have some ensemble patches like uh, two trumpets, two trombones, four horns. So that, that helps you get into the more epic and really, really cinematic territory, which is great. And then finally, the full ensemble patch. So. Uh, let's dive right in. I'm going to take you through the patches, uh, all of them here, and let's have a listen to the tone and the quality and just how it all sounds. So let's start right at the top with the trumpet. I typically like to uh, start with the high instruments in my review. So uh, in this case, we'll start with the solo trumpet. So let's have a quick listen to the legato. So you can see at the very end there, I had the mod wheel pushed all the way up. And that's basically the triple forte uh, dynamic. So one of the main standout features of this library is really the like immense dynamic range. Uh, on the uh, Cinematic Studio Brass website, it basically lists that uh, there are four dynamic layers that were basically recorded. And so, uh, you know, all of these transitions, uh, legato transitions, or recorded long form, as they call it, which basically means there's no X fading or there's no scripting of any kind um, to simulate legato transitions. It's all you know, true recorded, and um, they recorded those legato transitions in those dynamic layers as well. So, you know, as a result, it all sounds very natural when you transition from note to note. Now, I just played that at a quite a soft dynamic, but if I do it a little louder. It sounds just as good, and you notice that there's a tinge of vibrato in there as well, which gives it that really romantic feel. Uh, and you know, typically when we're doing legato lines, um, you know, it's pretty usual to be playing more of a romantic or a kind of an adventure line. So when you're holding that sustain, it's uh, that little bit of vibrato kind of adds some warmth and character to the sound, which is really lovely. Okay, let's hear some of these other articulations here. So we have some muted uh, sustains. Let's take off the legato here. Okay. Let's hear the staccatos. So from the top, you have your sforzando attack. This is kind of like the longest short that it comes with. Turn the mod wheel down a little bit, you get staccato, which is a little bit shorter. Even shorter, staccatissimo. And then finally, your repetitions. Now, when you do this, you can basically play a bunch of notes in a row or, you know, maybe a really, really quick scale up and down. Now you notice right there, the cutoff for the repetitions is actually quite quick, which makes sense because 
you know, you don't want the uh, tail from the repetitions to drag on too long or else it'll mask up the other notes that you're pressing, you know, really quickly. So it makes sense that they did this. Um, so if you're trying to end a phrase with a really short note, then I might do a bunch of repetitions and then end with a staccatissimo note because that tail is naturally longer. So maybe like something like this. You know what I mean? So if you end on a repetition note, you're going to get that really quick cutoff. So, you know, these repetition notes were really made to actually do repetitions or just really quick notes in succession. So uh, let's hear some of the flutters. Pretty nice here. Uh, some trills. Uh, really quick note, actually, in when you're, when you're playing the legato, if I'm holding down a G, for example, and then when I play the A flat, it's going to trigger the A flat. But as soon, if I let go of the A flat and I'm still holding the G, the G will not trigger again. So that's something really important to know. Um, that means you cannot create your own uh, trills, basically back and forth, unless you play them super quickly back and forth. Those two notes. So for example. Right? And that probably doesn't sound that good anyway. So what you want to do is actually use the trills patch. And uh, that one comes with half step trills and whole step trills. So. Now this is kind of in contrast, like the way this uh, trill engine works is that you have to press both notes that you want uh, very quickly together. So you can't hold one and then wait a few seconds and then hold the second one. You actually have to press them quickly together because <clears throat> with the orchestral tools libraries, um, you can hold one note down. You can basically play the second note whenever you want to, and then the trill activates. But uh, in this library, it's you basically have to have both notes pressed down within a certain amount of time, a very short window. So just make sure you uh, activate that quickly. Um, and then the Margato, Mercato articulation. These are basically sustains, but with a more of an attack on the first note. And you can see here on the repetition overlay, it, it activates that attack. So now what this library and what the uh, cinematics do to strings, uh, what people have been doing is for those quicker runs, you use the Mercado patch. So for example, oh, there's my first hanging note. Um, So you can see the handles fast runs quite well. Uh, if, if I try to do that with the sustains, you know, then each um, legato transition feels a little bit lagging behind. So typically you want to use the sustain patch for, or I mean the legato for, you know, more of the slower lines, that type of thing. And then it comes with some really, really nice rips. So. Now, you, it also comes with a reverb dial here, which you can use to add extra reverb to it, but I really like the default setting it comes with because the the on the stage, um, the Sydney, uh, what's it called, track, <coughs> track down stage, excuse me, I think it, uh, it has a really warm sound, more on the dark side. So out of the box, it doesn't sound like the brightest brass library, like Cinebrass, for example, but in terms of the actual dynamic range and getting it to pierce through the mix, uh, the instruments come recorded with those really high dynamic layers. So you can achieve that screaming, you know, trumpet or horn, just really get it to rip through and it, it can really work well. So, you know, kudos to Alex and his team for doing a really good job capturing those dynamics. Uh, now let's go into the solo horn. So I'll just talk less now. <laughs> Man, that just, that works so well, dang. Uh, how does it go? Yeah, 
anyone recognize that? Uh, okay, here's some staccatos. Again, really short uh, or really fast cutoff on those repetition samples. So muted and flutter. Uh, so let's hear some sustain. Okay, flutter. I should play the fortissimo sustain uh, dynamic. There's that really sweet poignant tone, and then write it up. Then it really cuts through after that. Some trills. Double tongue. So by adjusting the mod wheel, I can basically make, I, I can uh, adjust the number of repetitions I want. So if I hold it and push it up to the top, then it does double tugging for as long as I want. Bring it to the middle, only like six, you know that kind of thing. So it's pretty cool. So ribs. It's a really nice tone there. All right, solo trombone. Let's give this a listen. the mercado here. There's a repetition overlay you could hear there. Some shorter notes. So uh, the shorts here are controlled by velocity. The harder you press, the more brassy those samples are going to be. The rips. Almost like a moaning sound in a way. It's pretty cool. Uh, then we have the tube up, so. So with the mod wheel all the way up, the tuba doesn't get to that brassy sound. But you know, usually you would use the tuba as as a baseline warm support anyway. So we don't really need that um, so for some repetitions. Let's see. It's just a really warm tone there. Pre-recorded rips will always sound better than the ones we make on our own, honestly. And then finally, the last solo instrument is the bass trombone.
So for this one, where the where we have the legato, there's a little bit of a tiny dropout between each uh, between each note. So I might not use this one more exposed compared to the other ones. The other ones, actually, I'm using the solo horn right now in a, in a new piece, and it sounds really lovely. Uh, the bass trombone, I feel, is an instrument that generally is used to you know provide harmonic support and some extra strength in the orchestra, anyways. Um, and it feels like this one was made for that purpose, actually. So. Um, You hear how it almost sounds like each subsequent note is being tongued in a way. So there's a little bit of a cutoff. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but it's something to note, uh, just you know, to look out for when you're actually using this legato feature. Um, let's hear some double tongues. You know, these other articulations just sound so good. Um, right, so. Very bright and raspy tone there. Cool. All right, two trumpets. Let's get into this ensemble territory. So. Just turn on the legato. Let's hear the really soft dynamic. I mean, just by going through that, it's so it sounds so natural. Like when you start really soft and then just you know, just going between those layers, really it's so seamless. Like, um, yeah, the scripting is really great there. Just a note. You might want to use that for maybe a jazz thing, actually. Those trills. Two trombones. One thing I should note is that, uh, like with cinematic studio strings and solo strings, there is a little bit of delay, uh, you know, when you're playing the legato stuff, and it's it's quite it's more evident in you know the cinematic studio series than in some other libraries. But for me, it's a pretty pretty easy workaround. I just basically move everything back a little bit, move all the notes so they just activate earlier, then it lines up with the rest of the music. Another option is to you know do some delay adjustments here so that uh, you know it just compensates for that. But for me, I kind of like to see the MIDI move around, so I, I just take every every MIDI note and just drag it back a little bit. Um, okay, and then finally the four horns, or not finally, but... That almost sounds like a, a angry swarm of bees or something. Can you imagine the amount of work it might have must have taken to coordinate those rips together? Dang. All right, and then finally we have got the full ensemble patch. Now, unlike some libraries where you know there's actual mic positions here, it really really works well as a sketching tool because you can actually control which instruments you want to be playing you know, over the register of your keyboard. So if I turn off the uh, trombones, let's say, now everything's gonna play except for the trombones. 
love when sketching uh, sketching patches actually have legato in it. So. <laughs> Now you'll notice it is louder than the other patches just because it's multiple instruments layered in together. So naturally you're going to have that increase in volume. Um, let's take out the horns and let's say the bass as well. So now I just have trumpets. But now let's say I want them layered in together. So. And then when you get really, really low in the mud wheel, there's a niente function, which basically means it fades to silence. So um, you don't always have to release the note yourself. You can ride the mud wheel all the way to the bottom and then it'll just cut it off for you. However, it does sound quite abrupt. So if there was some kind of release tail that was added, you know, if you got down to that level, uh, that could have been really cool as well. But in any case, you know, you can always let go of the note yourself to activate that release tail. So um, that is Cinematic Studio Brass. Again, I'm, I'm glad this didn't turn into like a half hour review um, because, you know, a lot of libraries come overloaded with so much stuff. This is one of those that is very compact. It's what is it, like 37, 40 gigabytes, something like that. So it doesn't come with too much content, but what it does come with, it really covers so much ground in terms of your, you know, cinematic, um, you know, trailer stuff even because the dynamic range of this is so great that you can use this for multiple multiple applications. Um, for me, it's like a perfect library just because it. I think it's a really great balancing act between uh, Berlin Brass, which really excels in those lower dynamics, and Cine Brass, which is like absolutely perfect for the for the you know classic John Williams stuff that's so energetic and so bright. This has a happy medium to it. the The room tone is slightly darker than the other libraries. Uh, but however, the, the actual dynamic range of all the recorded instruments is just superb. So you'll never find yourself lacking in, you know, if you're looking for a super soft line versus suddenly a super loud line, you can get those very easily just from one single patch. So th I think that's really the standout feature of this library. Plus the Legato engine, they really spared no expense in, in getting it as smooth as possible. Uh, you know, people are asking about runs. You can use the Mercado patches for that. I completely missed that when I did my Cinematic Studio Strings uh, video. But uh, yeah, I mean, that is pretty much it. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the uh, description, or not, not description, comment section below. And I'd, uh, I'd be very excited to get back to you. This is a fantastic library. Um, definitely pick it up. And it's one of the most affordable brass libraries out there. So, you know, with this given quality at its given price, to me, it's a no brainer especially if you don't have a brass library yet to start out with, definitely consider this one. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And in the next video, we will, I don't even know yet. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.